New York's most historic fireboat is getting a dazzling new look. The John J. Harvey entered service in 1931, was decommissioned in the 90s, and called back into service after 9-11 to extinguish fires, evacuate victims, and inspire a city. Now, to commemorate the fireboat's history and the centennial of the First World War, the Public Art Fund and the British arts organization 1418 Now are paying homage using one of World War I's greatest innovations, a camouflaging technique known as the dazzle. Take a look. 1418 Now has been dazzling vessels in the UK and we thought it was really exciting and appropriate to collaborate them to bring a dazzled vessel to New York. Partly because that kind of great history of dazzle ships is not just relevant to the UK. When the US joined the war effort, thousands of ships were actually dazzled here. At the time that the artist Norman Wilkinson invented the concept of dazzle, I think that on average there are about eight ships being sunk a day crossing the Atlantic. So it definitely was born out of kind of a desperation. And it was kind of an idea around camouflage, but a very unlikely camouflage. It was intersecting forms and shapes and colors all painted onto to ships, to vessels, from cargo ships to warships to, to passenger ships. And the idea was these kind of patterns and forms and shapes would confuse anyone looking at them, namely the German submarines. They wouldn't be able to be targeted. My colleague Jesse Hammerman and I, we took to the, to the seas. I think we rowed every single boat on, on the East River and the Hudson to try and find the right vessel, but also the right partner. I was really struck by the John J. Harvey because of its very unique history. It was a vessel that was built in 1931 and was an active fireboat until the 90s. When it was decommissioned, it was going to be sold for scraps and then it was saved by a group of volunteers. And they have been sort of maintaining and operating it since. And it was actually called back into service um, during 9-11. It went to Lower Manhattan, it rescued people and then pumped water for 80 hours when the mains had gone out in that part of town. So it also is this kind of iconic hero of New York. And it just felt like a perfect partner for us in terms of their mission and their ethos. When it came to thinking about who would be a great artist to actually work with us to dazzle a contemporary vessel, it felt like the perfect choice to work with Tauber Auerbach. We could connect her practice back to sort of early avant-garde thinking around kind of pushing the medium of paint. Um, she's also very process driven. Tabo was very struck by, you know, it is this vessel that moves through water, but also water moves through the body of the vessel itself. And that kind of idea of fluid dynamics became sort of the starting point for Tabo in thinking about her design. Flow separation is actually a phenomenon that happens in fluid dynamics when you run in sort of an object through a body of water. The fluid will move both forward and backwards at the same time, creating these sort of incredible patterns. She chose to work with a very kind of laborious process of marbling, use that to kind of create an idea of fluid dynamics. Marbling essentially is putting oils or paints into a liquid bath, and then you move kind of combs through them. So you are creating sort of movement within liquid, and then you transfer that pattern onto paper. How do you take a 2D image and put it onto a 3D object? We took it to Cadell's Dry Dock in Staten Island. First of all, it had to go through all of its necessary repairs, from stripping it down to preparing it, for us to be able to dazzle it, creating almost like a blank canvas. And then for about a month, we had this group of scene painters working there. Scene painters being kind of a group of people that are able to translate 2D into 3D and create trompe l'oeil effects. So it was a company called Infinite Scenic, and Tabo there every day painting. Tabo was instrumental in making sure that her design was accurately rendered. No one had seen the John J. Harvey and then it re-emerged with this kind of amazing new look. Captain of the Circle Line like radioed in the captain of the John J. Harvey and was like, what on earth has happened to your boat? So it's, it's been a nice kind of reaction from the community that know it and also uh, bringing a new community into knowing about the John J. Harvey the history of the First World War, 1480 Now, Public Art Fund, and of course Tabba as well. We sometimes forget that we're actually on an island and we're surrounded by 
this huge body of water that connects us to the sea. And New York is New York because we are surrounded by the water. The kind of the history of its success very much relies on this body of water, but we're not so necessarily connected to it. And this project kind of connected us to those people that work every day and live and survive off of this body of water.